the leprechauns feel significantly different than St. Patrick. <laughs> The Saint, the leprechauns, when I'm channeling them, I'm like, man, come on. <laughs> they make me laugh and I'm like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna channel you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo! It's always fun to have some fun on St. Patrick's Day. And you know, what's going on in the world is so friggin' heavy these days. It's so important to have these moments and whether I, I create these moments by going live or you guys create these moments in your own life, when things get really, really heavy, it's like really important that we infuse fun, exciting, happy times in our lives, okay, to, to kind of counterbalance and to create some sense of normalcy and, f and fun. When I channel the angels, They'll often remind me, you know, our souls did choose to come to earth to have fun and to enjoy ourselves. It wasn't meant to be all doom and gloom, even though the unawakened ones are kind of running the show right now, okay? Just because they're choosing to be moving in a direction that isn't necessarily best doesn't mean that we have to follow suit. We get to choose if we're going to choose that path or not. So here we go. We're going to channel St. Patrick and see what message he has for us. And then I'm going to read the channel guidance from the leprechauns. And you guys feel free to ask any questions you want at the end of this, okay? So I'm going to tell you what St. Patrick feels like. I'm going to tell you how he's communicating through me. And then, of course, I'm going to relay his message for you. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's just see what he wants to say. You know, he feels very astute and polite to me. He's just thanking me and he's doing this and he's kind of bowing his head towards me. And he's saying the same thing that I hear the angels saying quite often during my sessions, my readings, which is for us to cherish these moments while they last. So, and they use the example of you know, before COVID, did we know how good we had it? <laughs> then COVID hits, uh, sanctions hit, inflation hits, uh, and life is completely different since COVID you know, on many levels, many levels. Whatever is coming is going to make some alterations to our experience on earth where we equate it to similar or like the monumental changes that COVID made for us on earth. The other thing I'm feeling from him is like this deep, deep well of eternal peace. Like he's so embraced in source frequency, but he himself pulls forth a lot of peace and tranquility and just this, this pure light from him. <laughs> He says to me, I believe we haven't met yet <laughs> because I don't talk to him mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've never channeled him. <laughs> and I guess this message is for any one of you that have never spoken to St. Patrick before too. Okay. It, he's also showing me as if I'm standing on a raft and all of a sudden the ocean's getting really choppy and really rocky. And you guys know I've channeled this before, which is... You know, when things get really rocky and choppy, what do we do? We're just going to part our legs a little bit more. We're going to get centered and balanced more. We're going to make sure we're in alignment even more. So don't get rocked around by the waves around you. He's also talking about, you know, what's coming up isn't going to be as much of a rock bottom as like the 1930s were, but we are going to swoop down quite low. And there will be individuals losing their shirts, whether that's their businesses, their livelihood, their homes. He wants uh, for each of you who have much to potentially lose, he wants you to hear this. What goes out can come back in. Nothing is truly lost. So please see it in this way. When the money goes out or when we lose certain material things, if we wish it, if we focus upon it, we can bring it back in. It may take a year or two or three or ten, but rest assured, what goes out can surely come back in. 
and he's doing this hand gesture. What goes out? If we lose anything, if we lose our shirts, remember, it can come right back in. And he's saying that it might come back in in a different way than how it originally came to pass. So you may not buy your house the second time the way you did the first time. Or he's also talking about getting shelter in different ways. Some people are moving off grid. Some people are living outside the city. Some people are being given a house by their loved ones, or some people are being moved into their loved one's home with them. These are examples of how if we lose something and something goes out, then there, when it comes back in, it will, it surely will, but it might look like or be slightly different than how it originally took place. He is encompassing earth. He is here often. He is watching over the proceedings here. And I see him hovering, facing earth with his hands outstretched like this. And I see him sending a lot of light from the palms of his hands towards earth, adding to the large amounts of light that is already here penetrating earth and each of its inhabitants. What happens when we shine a spotlight on heaviness? It squirms, it gets uncomfortable, it's like a magnifying glass on an ant hill. And he says that's what's happening right now. Egos are flaring, power mongering, power hungry individuals are acting up and instead of cooling things down they're feeding the flames don't be a part of the flame don't be a part of the bonfire the ways in which he feels is best to reach him whenever you like is when you're going out for a walk in nature he's also talking about if we ever feel like sitting in a sacred place and this is a church or it can be sacred land, it can be a place even out in nature that is sacred to you. These are the areas that are easier for him to reach you for the energy is already imprinted with a lot of light in these regions, in these areas, so he can reach you a lot easier there. And he doesn't want any of us to worry or be concerned about what is going to transpire just know that, remember, when you're on the raft and the waves get a lot rockier, just part your legs a little bit more to get more balance. Eat a more high vibrational diet. Go for walks out in nature. Exercise. Meditate. Sleep more. And if you can't do this, if you can't sleep more, if you can't take a nap, ask your team to help make it happen. He's talking about the governments trying to help their citizens during this time coming up, but it'll be, I guess we could use the words piss poor or not enough. So lean on each other, lean on yourself, and for, for goodness sake, lean on us, lean on us. Complain to us, talk to us, ask us to help you with whatever you need help with. And he says, this is St. Patrick. So I'm going to move to the guidance from the leprechauns. The leprechauns feel significantly different than St. Patrick. <laughs> the, Saint, the leprechauns, when I'm channeling them, I'm like, man, come on. <laughs> they make me laugh and I'm like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna channel you? <laughs> You're making me laugh so hard all the time. And I noticed that there was two of them. So you had the one really focused on channeling through me. And then you had the second one um, piping in. So I had the, the one and then the second one chirping. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with the leprechauns, what really makes you lucky? What's the truth in what really makes you lucky? Is it holding a four-leaf clover? Is it holding a horseshoe? I always remember my friend. I hadn't seen him for a long time. I said, yeah, it's like, this is amazing. This is what's happening in my life. He goes, you always did have a horseshoe, Kristen. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, couldn't possibly be manifestation and positive thinking. No, no. But that's how the more unawakened will see me, right? They're like, oh, you always were lucky. 
they won't see that I've done any kind of changes within myself and focused on what I want to create. Maybe I created a manifestation list or a vision board. No, 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 no. I did the abundance book by John Price. No, he wouldn't believe that. <laughs> okay. What really makes you lucky? We think of it more in terms of who has faith, who trusts and knows that good things come to those who believe. And I got a big smile with that. <clears throat> Wit and humor can only get you so far, you see, Kristen. If you believe you are lucky, then you are. Like attracts like, just like the law of attraction. You see, as soon as I talk up to them about who's lucky, what makes you lucky, what do they do? They move right to like attracts like, what are you focusing on? And it's the law of attraction. It's just that simple. If I'm sitting and worrying about debt and what I owe or what I need to pay, I'm going to choose moments throughout the day where I'm not focusing on it. So I'm going to do things like go sit at a coffee shop, go out for a walk, meet some friends, maybe go see a movie. And I'm going to try to elevate, elevate my frequency. And I'm not going to focus on the heaviness as much as I can. And the more I practice doing that, the more I allow my team to come in and help me. But if I'm like this and I'm like, fear, fear, worry, worry, fear, 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 they can still come in and help me, but I'm not going to make it easier for them. Okay. So the more uplifted you can bring your frequency and just relax and say, don't worry, Kristen, the angels got it in the bag. I've asked them to help me with this, this, and this. And then I, I can also talk it into being. Money flows effortlessly into my bank account. Opportunities come to me easily and effortlessly. All of my needs are being met abundantly for me now and always. Talk it, talk it, talk it, know it, know it, okay? And even in the beginning, you're going to do it and think, this just doesn't feel good, or I don't believe this. Do it anyways. Do it till the cows come home. What do rainbows really mean? Treasure. <laughs> and then they started laughing. You can see how it's hard to channel them. They're like, rainbows? Oh, it's treasure. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, that's great. Okay, although we don't recommend chasing rainbows around to find treasure, <laughs> we do say that rainbows are a sign from spirit. Only when you are very drawn to look up at one, which is a sign that there are good things coming. The other reason is everything is going to be all right. And now they started dancing arm in arm. <laughs> they started dancing like this. <laughs> so I'm drawn to a rainbow because everything's going to be all right. Second reason, good things are coming. It's just like when you look at 1111 or 111, good things are coming. How do we know when the leprechauns are around us? What will we notice? The answer to this is a youthful feeling, smiling, happy, like dancing and singing, an overwhelming feeling that everything is going to be all right. Take some time for yourself. You deserve it. And don't worry about the past or the future, for those times have either gone or haven't come yet. Know that we wish to uplift your spirits and help you feel whole again. And then I saw the second one go, yes, yes, that's good. Or the first one shoulder. <laughs> and what message do the leprechauns have for us? So the message from the leprechauns is, sure, as the days gone by, the days ahead will too. So try your best not to worry or concern yourselves with what is for it just like everything else will surely pass along in time. Just like we said, above humor and wit will only get you so far. So will good looks. So remember to be kind and nice to one another. Give a person a smile when you see them and know that you are well looked after. And for goodness sake, please ask us to help when you need it. 
Too many of you are struggling with a without asking for help. Know that the days will flow by in the wind and you will make it through to the other side. The other thing we wish to make note of is a lot of these tumultuous days are taking place for a reason. And these reasons include to make new legislations, rules, to be heard, and to be listened to, to be treated fairly and kindly. So, Brock, what are your thoughts on St. Patrick's Day and the fact that he chased the snakes from Ireland and that was the hunting down and killing of the Druids and their knowledge? Okay, so the first thing that I get from him is every, every person or grouping of people, religion, or even non-religious people, they have their time on earth and some come and they produce themselves. They produce their artwork, their knowledge, their written word, their tapestries, their beliefs, their faiths. And he's talking about them having their time. And for some of them, they're not meant to last forever. He's saying that he's really quite amazed that some of the groupings of people and their knowledge base or their belief systems have kept intact for this length of time on earth over centuries. And that's all he wants to say about it. It's similar or like when I've heard Archangel Michael and he wants me to talk about this. This is the only reason why St. Patrick is reminding me of something that I channeled from Archangel Michael in the past, which is people are worried about animals becoming extinct. And the message there was, there have been many animals that have become extinct over many years here on Earth. And in the future, there will be many more. So to think that something is going to last forever, it's a nice idea and concept. But the reality is, unless things change on Earth and they change drastically rather than slowly and gradually, then we're going to lose more species on Earth. And it's similar or like this. St. Patrick also wants to make it known that he doesn't think lowly or less than about any groupings of people or anyone whatsoever. If we have these belief systems that's uh, of our choosing, that is not of his. He has fully transitioned and crossed over into the light and he sees Earth and each of us and everyone here as a unified field of light. It's just here on Earth, we're on the outer edges of that field of light. So it's extra important to keep your frequency higher in this lower dimensional realm, you see. You can see my eyes kind of change a little bit there. That's because he's funneling his energy through my eyes. Yeah, just temporarily. So Cleo has a court proceeding starting Tuesday. Feels real heavy. Uh, I feel like I'm stuck or trapped. Okay. And I even feel tightness in my head. It's it's not cut and dry here, is it? It's, I don't know what this is. It feels convoluted or like if you get an inch ahead, it's almost like it's interceded. Or maybe there's more court cases here than what needs to be. What they're asking for you to do is to bring Jesus in on this, to help resolve this, and to bring clarity and justice. I don't feel like it's going to be a closed, easy situation. Am I right? You're telling me I'm right? It's almost like if you get in uh, two steps ahead, somebody tries to go in and um, stop you, maybe take you to court again, and we go to court again and look at the games and around, 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 around. And, and, and it's a real feeling of stuck or, or trapped. And so what we have to do when things are out of our hands and we really need help, and I don't say this from a religious standpoint, I'm telling you the soul of Jesus can really step in and help you in ways you can't even imagine. And not only you, but everyone involved. He's a pro. He's like a big bro. And let me tell you, I didn't want to work with him. So this speaks 
loud and clear with me knowing and seeing what he's been able to do for other people. So you really need to ask him to come in and help. In fact, what I would do is I'd say, Jesus, please come and help me in all areas of my life and just get it all covered. Yeah, you feel stuck and the charges are falsified. Okay. Okay. Bring in Jesus. He's telling me that uh, you feel very stuck and heavy in your mind, your thoughts. It's really important that he comes in to transmute a lot of this and help free you. And he says, don't worry. And um, he is talking about things getting cleared out, cleared away. Sometimes if we don't move things out of our lives, then what happens? Other things happen in our lives that clear them out for us. So for example, I couldn't clear alcohol out of my life. So what did I do? I started working with Jesus and I, I started to really focus in on that. Also, health issues happened again. So I was forced to clear alcohol out. So anything that isn't good for us, if we don't have the strength to clear them out, then there will be other ways that they clear, get cleared out, which aren't exactly joyous paths to take. All right, Sally, is it best for you to buy a house this year? Or is it best to keep renting? Renting for now. We need to be given a little bit. There needs to be a little bit more time for optimal momentum. What does that mean? They don't want you to be, you know, when you buy a house, you're like, I bought a house, but now your house broke. You get by month to month. Life isn't as easy. Everything's breaking down. Maybe you have to pay sewage, taxes, property taxes, hydro, gas, water, garbage. You see how that adds up? So what they're talking about is momentum in the sense of when you do go into it, that you've got financial momentum, whether that's only you or your partner or Maybe there's a little cottage on the property and it generates 2000 a month. So that's creating momentum so that you have that cushion so that you're not house poor. And that's what they're waiting for. Rent a little longer. Anything else on that? They love where you're heading with this. They love your positive attitude about it. And they love that you're trying to reach this goal because in truth, in the future, Renting is not sustainable. And you know this. You know this deep down. But we're waiting for the optimal moment to make this happen with momentum. 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 Why why can't you sleep? You haven't slept in 10 years. They're giving me they're having me feel your energy. So now I'm waiting for some words. Your energy feels a little bit stagnant or a little heavy, which is fine. If you think that we're all chipper, chipper, chip, chipmunks, we're not, okay? <laughs> like, forget it. <laughs> There's, I mean, I remember going through a year and a half straight where I was like, oh my God, <laughs> it was so heavy. <laughs> my friends were totally happy though, because I would hang out and booze it up with them, but I wasn't happy. You're telling me that part of this is your soul's contract to learn and grow from the contrast of this. Some people will, or some souls will choose health issues. Some people will choose, you know, a, a different narrative. This is like insomnia to me and it's, it's draining. It's also quite creating boredom or boring. It's like we have to create things to do. Grounding your energy out in nature often will really help and burning yourself out with, okay, so I'm, I'm working out. I'm working out. I'm going to exercise until I burn myself right out. And they're talking about if um, we can't sleep at night, we can try to do a lot of exercise and then try to have a nap during the day and get the sleep in when we can. Is this also a part of her starseed origins where she's incarnated? Partially, yes. So part of it is your signed up contract to learn and grow from this. And part of it is where you've incarnated, where sleep wasn't necessary or needed or warranted. 
there was no like sleep. Intermittent resting. So it's almost like they're showing me this. Resting. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So wherever you've incarnated. Now what is this? Because I've never seen this before. It's a type of starseed origin I'm not familiar with. Is this physical or non-physical? Both. You could move to non-physical and then move into physical if you wanted to. Although you prefer to stay predominantly non-physical. But there's, if you think about souls over in the spirit world, do they ever talk about sleeping? Nope. It's like your energy tried this experience on and they don't need to sleep. So in this lifetime, I'd like more sleep. Can you guys please make that happen? And then your job is to go out into nature and tire yourself out. Do laps in the pool, run on the treadmill, run around the block, run, cycle, get on your bike, go do whatever it takes to tire your body out. Staying indoors for too long or staying on electronics for too long is going to exasperate this situation. Aerie, why do you feel so stuck and everything is leading you to square one? It's never square one. <sighs> everything takes us somewhere. You might think it brings you back. Also, they're talking about your energy being okay with, you know when we create uh, our own comfort zone, our safe place, our safe space, we don't really want to venture out too much. So although maybe new things are tried, you're also okay with being in your in your comfort teepee. You know when we were little kids and we'd play in the tent or we'd make a teepee in the living room and we loved it. Man, we used to hook the TV up right into the cushion fort that we created. And we lived in there for weeks. <laughs> and it was the best thing ever. Sometimes my mom would make fudge and we'd be sitting in there shoveling in the fudge watching TV and we could just spend days and weeks in there, man. But it was comfortable. They like that you're stretching yourself. Anything you try that's new or different is a good thing. And they applaud it. I get, I'm really kind of set in my ways. I have my thoughts and they're set. I, I have my way of being my comfort zone. You know, you're saying totally with laughing. Okay. <laughs> But that's your energy. I mean, I see other people on, uh, you know, online and they're just happy getting off work, going home, eating a pizza, hanging out, lounging on the couch. They're, it, that's what they want. That's, that's, there isn't anything more than that. And the interesting thing here about your angels is no one's pushing you to like, come on, get up, get out there. I mean, yeah, try some new things if you like, but no one's making you or telling you you have to. Is there any other guidance here? What's going on up here in your thoughts? Is it more cr uh, criticism or woe is me, life sucks? Why am I going to bother trying? So we need to shift that. And you're the only one that can do it. So catch yourself when you do it. Shelf it because it ain't serving you. It ain't doing you no good. And then that will leave room for more high vibrational thinking to come in. And when that starts happening, then you're going to feel like you want to get up and get going. And then the things that you try will stick. Otherwise, we're going to resort you back to being comfortable and happy, content, doing what you've always done. We're all star seeds. Everybody's like, am I a star seed? Am I a star seed? I haven't met someone who isn't a starseed yet. It's just your starseed origins is something different than I haven't experienced before. With Violet's other starseed origins, what are they? Earth, human, I think she got that. <laughs> and a little bit Octurian, not much. Like a little dip a toe in the water, like maybe two times Octurian. Okay, and where else? That's it? Yeah. If Earth's tough for you, we know why. <laughs> Okay. A lot of souls, they'll go and do like hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes as a Pleiadian and then they come to Earth, which makes Earth easier for them to continue incarnating. But when you haven't had that kind of experience backing you before you come to Earth and the incarnations where you've been is vastly different than being human, Earth is not going to be as easy. So we need help to make it easier. The other thing I'm going to ask for you 
if you're okay with, you're going to decide if you're okay with, is asking Earth to ground your energy into her every single day for the rest of this lifetime and for all of your lifetimes. And what she tells me is she's going to upcycle your energy back into you and then back into her. She's going to transmute it. She's going to make it nice and good and high vibrational and anchor your energy into you. When we're ungrounded, where our thoughts are all over, we might have a hard time cleaning up. We might lose things. We lose track of time. We lose the keys. We are kind of like just kind of coasting through life, bopping along in the sea. So we're going to get the earth to help you if you're okay with that. Is there any other thing that can help, Violet? She's showing me you're like a seedling and you're just breaking the surface and growing into a, a fully formed tree here on Earth. So it's still early days here incarnating on Earth. And the angels are saying, we're not looking to make this uh, Disneyland on Earth for you. <laughs> okay. They're like literally doing this, like as if they're the happiest place on earth. It's not going to be like that. But the one thing they can do for you is to help things be just smoother, easier, not as many potholes, <laughs> uh, not as many bumps in the road. Okay. And you'll have uh, moments of happiness, moments of smiling. And that's good. They consider that a win. Some of my friends, they have very different starseed origins than I do. And they say to me, you just have such a deeper capacity for laughter and joy and happiness. And I said, I noticed that too. So I just can pull it out. I just pull it out from a well. <laughs> Whereas my friends that have had different starseed origins than Pleiadian, and they've been elsewhere, they, they like to laugh at me. <laughs> And sometimes I bring them outside of themselves and, but other than that, they don't have that depth or that will to draw upon. And that's fine. That's what I'm here for. I get them riled up. <laughs> I have other friends that have vastly different starseed origins and they used to say that all the time to their mom. This isn't home. I don't want to be here. The thing that we need to remember, ask for help. We've called in earth to help things make things easier. Okay. If you're up for Jesus, he'll come and help make things easier. And we create the positivity. Okay. So I'm going to go bowling. I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to go watch Dune 2 on the big screen and IMAX in this freaking awesome movie. And I highly recommend it. So create moments that you want to do. Remember, your soul came here to learn, but it also came here to have fun and enjoy itself. Okay? And the more you do that, the more you get yourself up out of yourself. But if you're at home, you're hunkered in, you're on electronics, you don't get outside, you don't want to be around people, you're not going to make it easy on yourself. Mm -mm. Whether you go volunteer and help people, that would be one way of get you getting up out of yourself helping other people. I don't know how you want to do it. Might be the local knitting club and it might be helping feed people food. Remember forcing yourself to get up and out might be uncomfortable, but it's going to be far better off for you than staying put and isolating and hunkering in. And I see tons of starseed, starseeds do that. And it doesn't make things easier on the long run. It affects mental health. You got to get up and you got to get around other people. That's my opinion. My guidance for you. Meg is wondering, is it best for her to take the mediumship for beginners course that I'm offering in April? You can if you wish. You don't have to. See how you feel about it. It'll be good for you to be around others online that are positive And you'll have fun doing it. You'll learn a lot. Will it carry through? onwards to a degree see how see how you feel about it that's what they're saying i wish i could tell you a yes or no so what they're saying is if you keep thinking about it and you're feeling more and more pulled then go and take it if you're hanging back you're not really thinking about it 
then don't take it, okay? As we get closer to April. There are parts of it that you'll learn a lot from, but it's not like it's, I feel like spiritual or mediumship, you got your foot in and then you're going to be focusing on the 3D or the outside world and then you'll be your foot in learning and then you'll be out here, okay? Whereas for me, I've been in, I've been in the pond and swimming and back paddling for eight years. <laughs> you know, some people will have certain experiences, seeing things, and it freaks them so off so much they freak out and then they shut everything down and i remember when i was first starting i'm like just don't freak me out okay <laughs> uh so you know that was my top thing i said to them and so they made sure everything was very gradual with me some people are like i want it i want it now i want you guys to open me right now i want all of it i want all and then they're like yeah i've had this headache for like weeks <laughs> And I'm like, what did you ask for? And I can't sleep. And um, I just have so much light frequency bombarding my body all the time. And some people get so much light frequency, they forget who they are for like two days. And I've seen this. So what I say is, I would like to open comfortably, gradually, and um, everything make it, it came so quick and it overwhelmed you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have things comfortable now. Notice Gabriel making this known. Brock, let's see what type of indigo you are. Humanist, like me. <laughs> and and Paul. Yeah, so indigo humanist. You, um, oh, they're they're really complimenting you here. <laughs> You have a lot to say, and you speak it eloquently or well. You don't throw your opinions down people's throats. You just lay it out there if they want to hear it or not during moments that you feel are best. And I don't get that you try to change people, which is good, because as indigos, we love to do that. <laughs> I mean, if somebody comes to me and they're asking me, well, yeah, then I'm going to move in that direction. But otherwise... I'm not going to try to change people. They're telling me that there are a lot of, like they're showing me as if I'm looking at uh, tree roots and this is your path ahead. And I see all these tree roots and some of the tree roots are really lit up with brilliant white light. And the paths ahead for you are divinely guided and are bringing in a lot of light and good things to come. They just got a big grin on their face and they're talking about you finding a partner, the right one, the right fit, another indigo as well. It's almost, I feel, this is what your path ahead feels like. Things are getting really good. Wow, things are really good. Well, things are even better. They're even better than I even imagined. Oh my God, things are even better. <laughs> Okay, so it's a layered effect. It is time for me to go, guys. I had an amazing time with you guys. It was like friggin' amazing. Have an awesome weekend, and I will see you next Thursday where we're going to be bringing in your spirit guides and channeling any guidance for you on relationships. This could be relationships with family members, relationships with friends, relationships with partners, anything you need help with with your loved ones or people or your, or, or your boss. Relationships. Also, select dates available until the end of the month at 20% off if you'd like to schedule a reading. And next Sunday is the Akashic Records class for only $20. Can't wait. You guys have an amazing weekend and I'll see you this week. Bye.